Yeah, let me start out by saying this is, um, I'm really excited to chat about this always because as I've said to you, I think this is like one of the coolest, most exciting times to be practicing journalism, teaching it, researching it. For me, we're almost going through some sort of a renaissance, even so, though it may seem a little bit uncertain. I think it's really exciting. Um, so at Ithaca College in New York State, um, I'm responsible for basically integrating the use of mobile devices and social media and journalism into our curriculum. So we integrate it into existing classes, uh, such as introductory journalism classes, but then I also teach a standalone class on it to, to dig really deep into the topic. So the students with that are producing content across website, across social media, but the key thing is that they're using a mobile device in the field to gather the video, to edit the video, they're using certain apps, to take the photos, and then when they create all this content, they are creating it not only for a multimedia article on a website, but also for social media. And always in the back of, in the front of our mind, I should say, we are thinking about the new audience, the audience that is now active, the audience that has so many options out there, and how we can provide value to them uh, with what we do and making sure that as they're scrolling through on their mobile device, our content that we make it engaging and easy for them to understand. Um, and that's a huge part. But also creating a sense of community among the, the audience, because I think that's where social media really has been really helpful for the journalism industry is because it's no longer one directional, right? It's no longer this top down approach where we are the journalist, we are the editors, and we're going to tell you what the news of the day is. We can actually, as journalists, have a conversation with our audience. And I think that, at the end of the day, can actually build trust with our audience because the audience now sees us as real people. So we, from day one, even for students who start in our Intro to Journalism class, we teach them how to take a story, whatever story it is, and how to figure out how that can be packaged for any platform. So not just traditional TV or traditional website, but from day one we say, okay, how can we use mobile devices in the field to gather content that can be packaged for social media, for example. So that starts in our intro classes, but then in my class we take it to the next level. And so for that, it provides a lot of flexibility in terms of what we can do during the reporting process, because we don't have to carry around heavy gear anymore and in fact when we approach people with just a smartphone or an iPad to interview there's not that barrier they're not afraid like oh my god there's a big camera I don't want to talk to this person so it actually makes it a much more natural conversation with the person you're interviewing so yeah regarding like the future of where mobile journalism is going I think content specific I think that all the research I see, particularly related to what users are engaging with on social media platforms while using a mobile device and scrolling through, is video, but particularly I'm spending a lot of time now on video that's readable, is what I call it, so video that has subtitles, because I think that um, right now people want an authentic experience. They can get that through video, and also they're oftentimes as they're scrolling through on their phones, they're not able to turn up the volume of the video, so they need to be able to understand that video with text on the screen. So I think that is gonna to continue to become more important, but then also on the video side, I think this whole immersion thing is gonna become much more important, both immersion from video that's recorded and also immersion from a live perspective. Like I think the whole live aspect of taking people into the scene of something in the moment is really, really engaging with a mobile device. We can do that from, from anywhere. Um, so I think for them that really is exciting because holy cow, like I can be there in the moment while something is, is going on. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, think about it. If you weren't using a mobile device for your news gathering and you're working at an outlet, for example, in my case in the United States where almost all reporters at every outlet, it doesn't matter if you're working for a TV station, quote unquote, or a multimedia website, they're expected to, whatever story they're reporting on, they are expected to share via social media, 
they're expected to engage the audience. So if you're not using a mobile device and you're just using a traditional camera, the workflow is gonna be very difficult. With the mobile device, we can instantly take all our stuff. If we need to edit it, we can edit it right down there and we can share directly to social media or wherever. And we can also use, you know, we can also use tools like Google, uh, like Dropbox or Google shared folders where right from our, our smartphone, we can drop the content that we have into a shared folder and our newsroom, our colleagues can access that content back in the newsroom. The workflow is so seamless with a mobile device that it just, it simply makes sense in terms of what we're doing. Um, right. So, I mean, we know nowadays is that. Uh, I'm of the belief, and this is like fundamental of how I teach stuff, is that in order to do our work nowadays, because we have the access to mobile devices where we can produce content and we can now publish it directly to our own website, our personal slash professional website, without being connected to a traditional news outlet. So journalists now are able to build their brand without even having to be hired by a traditional news outlet. So for my students, that is an imp a critical thing because in my class, I teach them a couple of things that are at the heart of it. It's one, I have them choose a specific topic that interests them. It could range from politics to the environment to the arts, and they build during the course of the semester their community, their portfolio around this in a number of ways. One, let's say a student chooses environmental issues. They have to each week, they have to blog about issues relevant to the environment. So that is on their professional website that they're blogging. But in addition to that, they also have to do original reporting related to that. So that is typically environmental related stories in the community where my university is located. So they're doing blogging. They're also doing original reporting. And then at the same time, during that process, they are active on social media. So they are engaging with communities on social media and using hashtags and at mentions related to that particular topic. So over the course of the semester, the whole goal is for them to take original reporting, the use of blogs, their use of engaging content on social media and actually having a conversation with people who are on social media who are active in a space around their topic. And all this comes together to create a really nice brand, professional brand around that particular topic. They can then leverage that and use that, for example, when they're looking for internships, when they're on the job hunt, because potential employers, and I already see this with students who have been hired, they say, holy cow, like that person already understands how to carve out a niche using social media and using these tools. and that can really serve us well as an outlet if we hire them because they understand how, how to build a brand around content and engage people. Because at the end of the day, is, at the end of the day, people have so many different options in terms of where to go for content. And so it's critical for a news outlet to hire reporters and have reporters that have that skill set of understanding like, we can't just create this concept, content and put it on our website and it's just gonna live in a vacuum, we actually need to go out there and meet the audience where they're active and that's gonna make them aware of what we're doing. We can no longer sit back and just say, okay, people are gonna type in the URL to our website and come to us, that's not how it works anymore. Yeah. Journalism is a conversation, it's a two-way conversation, which is for some journalists who've been around for a while, it's a very difficult concept to grasp because you know, I've been in the industry for 20 years, and yes, I remember first starting out where we didn't have a whole lot of contact with the audience. We might get the phone calls in the newsroom. We might get when there was finally email, emails. We might get letters in the mail, but it wasn't this very active audience that we have now where there, we have to have a conversation with them. And so with that, though, there's an opportunity to build, I think, trust with the audience because the we have lifted kind of like the veil, the secret on what we do as journalists and we can bring them into the conversation. And the hope is by, by bringing them into the conversation, just like with anyone building that relationship along the way that they will, they will come to understand what we do better and trust us and turn to us more than they have in the past perhaps, particularly recognizing that with the flood of information now that we actually are trained to verify information and 
you know, we have the skills to provide valuable content.